When the family's Jeep that two-year-old Connor Cantania was playing in rolled down the driveway into their pond, his family was unaware what had happened. Leo asked six-year-old Paige to go look for her brother. Connor! I went out there and Connor was up there and the Jeep wasn't there. Connor! He wasn't down there throwing rocks in the tank. He usually does that. Dad, the fence is broken. I walked out and I saw the Jeep wasn't there. Wendy! What? Where, where did you park the Jeep? The tank was just calm. Look at the fence. I knew what had happened. I mean, it, it, it crossed my mind so quick that it scared me. Oh, my God, Connor. <laughs> I just lost it. I thought, oh, my God, you know, it's underwater, and he's, he can't survive. There was no part of the Jeep sticking out. It was totally submerged. The tank's 15, 16 foot deep. The water was so nasty and murky that you couldn't see anything. We just didn't know where to look. Connor! It was just awful. I could not touch him. I couldn't feel him, and I couldn't find him. Connor! We ran around screaming and hollering, hoping that he wasn't in the tank, but... He didn't answer. I was thinking if my mom can find him, he must have went to the bottom. I felt sad because I used to play with them all the time and have fun with them. Got her! The darkest moment for me was when 15 minutes had gone by. And I know that no one can survive underwater for 15 minutes. I was in a daze just thinking I've lost my son and, and he's gone. If I would have had a stick of dynamite or two to blow the dam, I could I would have done it to, to let that water get out of that tank where I could find him. I just thought this is all my fault. You know, he's dead because of me. My child is dead because of something that I neglected to do. Oh, God. Live Oak County Sheriff's Dispatcher Jane Risky took Leo's call for help. Yes, sir. Sir, you're going to have to calm down. When he told me that his son had been under that long, you can only think the worst. What do you mean where I'm calling from? He can't calm down. But it's our job to calm them down to a point where their common sense takes over. Just to hear somebody on the telephone help. It was going to take at least 25 minutes before someone could get out here, but something clicked in my head that said, you got to get a hold of yourself. I told Wendy, I said, if we can find tracks, we'll find the Jeep. I had really given up, you know, I just felt numb. I kept seeing his face over and over again, in the Jeep, underwater. All I could think about was, I was supposed to have his picture made the next day. What am I going to do? You know, I don't even have a picture of him. No, he's not. The helplessness I felt, thinking that, you know, he was, I was never going to see him again. It's just a pain that you can never imagine. Right here, Wendy. Right here. I finally found some tracks going into the water. And when I looked up, I could see these bubbles come up. There's the bubbles right out there. I swam out with one leg down. I finally bumped the hood of the Jeep. I was just thinking my baby's dead. You know, I can't be the one to pull him out. I, I don't want to go, I don't even want to go out there. And he said, but I can hear him. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way you can, you hear something else. I can hear him I guess it took the second or third time for him to tell me. 
and finally it just clicked. He's alive. He's alive. I hear him. I hear him. Okay. I couldn't hold my breath long enough to find him. There you go down. Okay. I felt close and I just grabbed. When he came out of the water, all you could see were those big eyes, and he just held on to me, and we, we swam out. He was clinging pretty tight. You could feel his little heart pounding. I just hugged him as hard as I could, all the way up to the, the driveway. Two-year-old Connor Cantania was trapped in an air bubble in the soft top of the Jeep for more than 20 minutes. Hey, go get a towel, please. we okay. got to get him warm. Whether he got up into that air bubble all on his own or whether he was sucked up into it, you know, nobody will ever know. <laughs> he came so close to death. It was just an incredible feeling. It was just incredible. I was like, there's no way that this could happen. I mean, how could this happen? Good boy. Is he going to be there you go. Connor was examined at a hospital and found to have nothing wrong with him. Although the incident has not changed him, the same can't be said for his parents. Today, we take the keys out of our vehicles. I'm a little more cautious. We take turns saying, where's Connor? What's he doing? My daughters weren't like this, but... He is totally different. He's just, he's something else. <laughs> he's playing better, but sometimes he still kind of does bad things a little bit. He never gets in the Jeep anymore, only if my mom's out there, because he got scared when he did that. I've heard people say that you don't know what it's like to lose a child. And I probably never could understand it until that day. I don't know how people go through that. It's flat. There you go. I cried for two days after. It would just cross my mind. What would I have done if I would have lost my son? Every once in a while, God gives us that little pinch to put everything into perspective. And we just have to thank God that it was not his time. Next, people with advanced age don't do well with trauma. And he had particularly severe injuries.